Can you hear me now? Are you there? Ah, there we go. Okay, great stuff. Uh, thank you all. It's great to see you uh, go on screen. I wish this was in person, but hey, uh, it's just the age of technology. Um, so uh, again, great to, to see you all. And uh, thanks, Lynn, to, to, for, for organizing this and to students as well. Uh, look, I I will pass I will pass the the, the whole sort of uh, legal technicalities as that has been discussed by the previous speakers. So and I want to dwell more into the politics um, that are driving this, uh, because when you look at um, I think just Dennis Davis touched touched on this um, uh, very well, because he has spoken about the inconsistencies when it comes to South Africa's foreign policy. And we have noticed that uh, those of us who have been watching uh, South Africa's government in terms of how it has been conducting its foreign policy. This is a foreign policy issue for South Africa. Uh, what's going on in Israel um, um, as, it's, um, as it's fighting Hamas. It's a, it's a foreign policy issue and it's got its own drivers. Because, I mean, when you look at South Africa, this, our government has, it has rolled uh, uh, carpets for people who have been accused of um, uh, of, of genocide in Africa. Omar al-Bashir is one of those people, yet we allowed him into this country. And in fact, our government protected him to, 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 in his escape um, uh, you know, around, around 2015. It's our government that helped him, uh, that helped Omar al-Bashir al -Bashir, al -Bashir to, to escape um, um, you know, um, the country. Uh, again, we saw a few weeks before the case was uh, South Africa went to the ICJ. They welcomed one of the Sudanese warlords who have been himself accused of um, of genocide in Darfur, in Sudan. Uh, yet the behavior, they all these people in Africa who have been accused of genocide, South Africa never went as far as going to international courts to 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 you know to 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 start a case to initiate a case against these people. Uh, why these inconsistencies? That we are seeing. So there has never been a consistent policy uh, from our from our government, and they have chosen, as Jan, as Judge Dennis Davis has said, over the past years, the observation uh, has been that South Africa has largely been leaning toward a, a, a toward a foreign policy that is on the side of of China, Russia, and all this uh, all the, the groupings of um you know of of the grouping of of BRICS. So we are seeing that in South Africa. Safa's so, government. We are seeing a government that has become sort of very much over the over the, especially under Zuma administration and and Ramaphosa as well, that leaning toward China at the expense of our relations with them, um, with the West. We have seen our relations with the West sort of really taking taking a nose dive, uh, and that's because we have a leads more toward um. Toward, um, toward Russia and China and other countries. Now, that's one element. Now, there's also an election that's taking place in this country this year. It's an election that has been described described by some as the, our 1994. Uh, that this is a very critical election. Now, what, what the NC has done here, which is smart, by the way, they are clever, these guys. What they have done is to capitalize on this issue in, the, in an attempt to bolster their image, an image in the country that has been tarnished. The polls show the NC doing terribly uh, at the election this, this year. In fact, there is a, almost every poll I've been seeing. It shows that the NC is going to do very bad, that it's going to go into a coalition government this year. Now, they have seen this issue of Israel-Palestine, of Israel, sorry, Israel-Hamas, uh, because many people they are, they are, they are emotion, they're emotional about this issue in South Africa. They have jumped into it to, cap to capitalize on their on their image as, as they have failed to resolve the very serious problems that the country faces. You could be talking about the problems of blackouts with ESCOM, you could talk about the problems of crime, the problems of unemployment rates, the problems of um, dismal economic growth. So all these social economic challenges, the NC has done badly. Um, in, in, in addressing them. And an issue like this one, for them, politically, uh, in domestic politics, it's a way of trying to bolster or to, you know, to, to reshape their, their image. 
So there are those dynamics. Okay? This is not about this is not this, this is not about an obsession about human rights that you know this is human, they are running around it's human rights abused by Israel and so on and so on. If that was the case, then our government should have been consistent in how it approaches the issues of human rights, including addressing the fundamental, the very big human rights abuses that are taking place, abuses that are taking place in Africa. Now, let me give you another very uh, important example. Over the past years, thousands and thousands of Christians have been slaughtered in Nigeria, Northern Nigeria. It's a very serious problem that is taking place in Northern Nigeria. The slaughtering of Christians by Islamist um, um, uh, terrorists, it's been a shocker. Yet, I have never seen our government going, taking bold steps in trying to address such, issue, such issues, um, in trying to, to highlight and to take steps to say, listen, there is genocide, take, there is a slaughtering of Christians in Northern Nigeria and other slaughterings in the continent. We need to initiate, initiate the, the steps that the steps that are, that are as big as what they have done uh, with respect to, to to the ICJ. So there is hypocrisy here. Okay? This is politics. We are not going to be. We should never be. We should. We should, we should not accept to be manip manipulated by these the assertions from the NC that no, we are driven by human rights. It's because innocent people are dying. If if they were if that was the case, if that if that was what mattered to them, then they would have applied the same thing across these atrocities atrocities we have seen um in the African um continent. Now another thing to raise here, which I think is it's very important to to highlight the the it's 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 it, it, it's disturbing to see that our government, the ANC government that we have, has never highlighted and made a push um, on the matter of uh, the slaughtering of Christians um, in the, in northern Nigeria. South Africa is largely a Christian country, you know, and um, what's happening there, it's supposed to concern um, the ANC and take those those steps. Um, the Israel, what it's doing there in the Middle East, Israel is fighting Hamas, right? Um, there is no intent of Israel to 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 slaughter the innocent people of um, um, of Palestine. They have made it clear that they are fighting Hamas terrorists. Now, these Hamas terrorists, they have the same ideology that the that the terrorists in Nigeria. Uh, in northern Nigeria have in, in, in slaughtering Christians there. Um, now, I mean, these are these are things that we should be we should not be hostile to that Israel has is 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 in the fight against the people who go out to slaughter innocent people. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the same ideology that we are seeing in northern Nigeria where there's intolerance intolerance toward Christians. Um, and um, Christians are being slaughtered at a very shocking rate, and yet our government is largely sort of not, you know, it doesn't bother itself about that. So I think those are the issues to raise here. Now, I need to make a very important point here as well. Now, let's think logically here, because I think this thing, because of emotions, and, and um, it, it's a sensitive issue to many people. It seems to me that the logic goes off the window. Now let's bring this logic here. This is a political because I'm talking more politics here. Now, if South if if our citizens, I'm a South African, right? If our citizens were were held hostage by a foreign terrorist entity or whatever entity, right? I would expect the president president of South Africa, Sir Ramaphosa, to do something about it. I would expect the president to rescue those citizens. Which president would not do that? Which president would not do that? Give me one country where a president will not send people to rescue his citizens. Which will, there's no country that would do that. That would do that. Yet I know people, they do know that. But because of politics and this bias, um, 
largely, at least in my observation, in the mainstream media and so on, they pass against Israel. They don't want to say that. Everyone knows that logic, that there is no leader of a country who would allow his people, even if they are five, to be held hostage and not rescue them. And just say, ah, oh, you know, I'm just going to, uh, we're just going to forget about those people. No country can do that, right? Yet how, why do we expect the Israeli government to act differently? Why do we, why, why do we expect that? How do, you, you can never expect that. Any person who thinks logically and rationally, you can never expect that, that they can just, you know, forget about their citizens. Now, what I want to highlight to you about that, because the Israel, the, the Israel, the Israel Hamas uh, Palestine thing, it's a political issue. You see, this thing that is being is being driven into the international courts of justice. This is a political issue. It's a political issue that needs a political solution. Now, there have, there have been people, including our government, who have chosen to go into courts to try and resolve issues that are that are that are more political. That's a political issue that needs diplomacy. That needs to be that needs to be there has to be a sitting down and to, to find diplomatic means, the creation of a two-state solution. Because I'm a, I'm a believer in the two-state solution, that people of Palestine, they do, they should have their, their state as well. But we need to create the conditions. And they themselves, the people of Palestine, have a responsibility to work towards uh, creating an environment that will allow them to, you know, to, to, to make the case that we, um, we do deserve our state. We want our state, um, and have leaders who will be willing to 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 have to form a long lasting peace lasting peace with Israel. Israel has the same responsibility. I'm very much opposed to this view that for some reason someone has less responsibility than the other person. I don't buy that, right? Both of both parties they have a responsibility if they want to form um, that the. If they want to live, uh, you know, um, peacefully, uh, besides one another, they both have the they both have the responsibility. People of Palestine have the responsibility. Israelis have the, have have the responsibility as well. No one is better or, or you know has a greater or lesser responsibility than than um, than um, another. So, okay, the that, is, I, I think we want to just uh, from that we want to try and make time for questions. So you want yes, to yeah, just to, just to close off, Liv. Thank you. So 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 now the, the the main point I want to make here is that this is an it is this a political matter. Um, this matter should be solved uh, in a diplomatic manner. There has to be negotiations. It's this is not a it's not really a legal sort of thing. It's a political issue. It needs to be resolved politically. And um and, and I think our our government has had uh, because of its own motives um, and agenda. That is more of an NC agenda. It has it has let us it has let us down in my view, and it's letting uh, the peace process down. Thanks, Lynn.